Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the temperature on Mars and that's also a very interesting topic because some very unusual things when we take a look at the data. But first of all what drives the temperature on Mars? Of course it's the atmosphere for one and it's also the distance away from the Sun. Now Mars is about one and a half times as far away from the Sun as the Earth is and because the intensity of the light that we receive is proportional to 1 over the distance squared and since the distance of Mars is about one and a half times the distance of Earth we find that the amount of sunlight we get, the intensity of the sunlight on Earth is 1361 watts per square meter where on Mars on average it's only about 585 watts per square meter so it's less than half the warmth we get from the Sun on Mars relative to the Earth because of that temperatures are going to be quite a bit lower and in addition to that the atmosphere is so thin it simply cannot hang on to the temperature the heat during the nighttime so temperatures drop quite a bit at Gale Crater which is a crater right about here at the lower elevations there uh, measured on consecutive days and this is really interesting this is the daytime temperature and the nighttime temperature for the dates of November 16, 17 and so forth which is kind of towards the winter time in the northern hemisphere however Gale Crater is only about 5 degrees north of the equator so it shouldn't be too affected by the winter in the northern hemisphere somewhat but not completely and so we see daytime temperatures that are very consistent from one day to the next this is in degrees Fahrenheit which is on average about minus 12 degrees centigrade by no means warm but not bad for Mars so 9, 12, 10, 12, 12, 9, 10 so very very consistent and then notice the nighttime temperatures are also extremely consistent from minus 107 to minus 105 an average of about minus 76 degrees centigrade notice the difference between day and night are over 100 degrees Fahrenheit or about 60, about 64 degrees Celsius so it's it's amazing how enormously different the day and nighttime temperatures are and it's also amazing how consistent they are from one day to the next during the daytime and how consistent they are for the low of the nighttime so it is very hmm, how should I say very unexpected on the earth it's not at all that way because on the earth there's a lot of things that can happen to the temperature with vast amount of vast oceans that temper the temperature uh, big air masses that move from one region to another big sea currents that move from one region to another all affecting the temperature from one day to the next not so on Mars it's very homogeneous you get what you get every day and every night and of course during the summertime the daytime temperature will be higher and lower in the winter time same with the nighttime temperatures but the consistency from day to day is absolutely amazing Planet-wide, the average temperature is about minus 60 degrees centigrade. That's a combination of the North Pole and the equator regions. And globally, you can see on average, the temperatures are quite frigid, about minus 81 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 60 degrees Celsius. And the high at the equator in the summertime can be as much as 20 degrees centigrade. That's about 68 Fahrenheit, 293 Kelvin. And you might think, wow, that's almost warm enough to walk around in a t-shirt now not quite let's say that you could walk around in clothes you had some breathing mechanism that you didn't need a spacesuit you will need a spacesuit by the way and Mars goes to low the low uh, pressure but let's say you could walk around could you walk around in a t-shirt and the answer is no even though the temperatures are 20 degrees centigrade the atmosphere is so thin that it wouldn't contain the heat so the amount of molecules striking you at that temperature would be so few and the amount of radiation going away from you to space to the region around you is so great that you would freeze to death very very quickly even at these temperatures so they're a little bit deceiving it's not like living room temperature you would freeze to death in 20 degrees centigrade if you didn't have a space suit on the low on average minus 153 extremely low temperatures uh, that's due to the uh, the regions in the northern polar cap and southern polar cap that can get very very cold uh, during the winter so you can see that yes those temperatures are quite low uh, the day average about minus 5.7 degrees centigrade in the more temperate region and the night average about minus 78.5 degrees in the more temperate region near the equator 
On the Viking side, we took some temperatures and we had daytime temperatures of minus 17.2 centigrade and minus 107 at night. So you can see that some very, very frigid temperatures were recorded there by the Viking spacecraft. Notice we did some soil temperature measurements and we found some soil that heated up to 27 degrees centigrade. Again, it's the sunlight hitting the sand and heating up just like you would find at the beach. At the, uh, the Spirit rover, they indicate that they had a temperature measurement of 35 degrees centigrade, but I put a question mark there because I have a hard time accepting that, that that is actually correct. Uh, I read it somewhere, but I'm not sure if that is a, a valid temperature. I should look that in, uh, look that up a little bit more. And here's an also another very interesting fact about uh, temperature uh, that is affected by the dust. Remember that we talked about these big dust storms, and when these big dust storms occur, notice that it tends to lower the temperature on the surface by as much as 20 degrees Celsius. So a big drop in temperature when it gets very dusty. Temperature drop because the sunshine simply can get through to warm up the surface. On the other hand, it raises the temperature by about 30 degrees in the upper atmosphere. And so you would think that when the temperatures go up in the upper atmosphere, you have more turbulence in the atmosphere, you have more uh, convection currents moving around in the upper atmosphere because it is warmer then, and it could be part of the reason why once a dust storm starts, it just really keeps going because the, it causes the temperature to increase in the upper atmosphere. Again, one of those theories, it could be, but we don't know for sure. We simply don't know yet what gets those dust storms going, but it does have some interesting effect on the temperatures. So there you go, I, mean, I had a, an interesting picture here of what we call a dust devil. Now if you drive around in the summertime in the uh, western deserts in the United States, you'll see these things all over the place, but they're relatively small. Sometimes you even drive through one by accident if it happens to cross the road just as you're coming along and you feel the car kind of shaking around a little bit, kind of like a mini tornado. Uh, some of them are kind of fun, it's, it's interesting. But on Mars, these things are absolutely enormous that can go into the atmosphere as much as 10 kilometers and that may have the diameters of upwards of one kilometer in diameter. So you see these dust, these dust devils get absolutely enormous. Again, why did they become so big? Uh, first of all, there's relatively strong winds on Mars relative to the Earth. And secondly, the uh, gravitational force is so small that that dust particles can reach very high into the atmosphere and the turbulence of the air can go very high into the atmosphere and you see the result of that is these enormous dust devils and they even cast a shadow on the surface of Mars. This is taken from space and um, yeah some very interesting features caused by the variation temperature along with the strong winds caused by them as well. So there you go that's what it's like on Mars. Don't expect that when you see something like this that it's very pleasant in the summertime like a walk on the beach, it's still going to be very cold regardless of the temperature and you definitely need to have heat, spacesuits, and all kinds of ways to keep warm in these frigid conditions on Mars. And that is the way it is.